Hey everybody! Look, we're in short sleeves. <laughs> Finally. You are? <laughs> I'm so long sleeves. It's a little chilly today. Yeah, like 70 today here in Florida. <laughs> so we made it back to Florida. We had an interesting trip down, but we're glad we're here, home for the holidays, which is a new thing because we were not last year and we just got some mail delivered. So while we're here in Florida, we're definitely gonna be doing some more day sales with the Corsair 880 and just having some fun on it. We're probably gonna be doing much more cruising on this boat rather than just doing day sales. We're gonna take it down to the Keys and out to the Dry Tortugas, maybe over to the West Coast. And we're throwing around the idea of the Florida Loop, like down to the Keys, around the West Coast, and then back through- Lake Okeechobee, back to Stewart and to Jupiter. Yeah, so let us know if you think that would be interesting. We've never done it. We've never Never been to the west coast we've never been cruising on trimaran so we're really excited because we're going to be doing a bit more cruising we definitely need something to get ashore specifically because we have a little dog that has to go to the bathroom every day and we contacted highfield we love our dinghy that we had on adrenaline so we asked them if they had anything that might be good for this boat because we don't have a ton of space on this boat and it is extremely weight sensitive obviously if we want a dinghy we're willing to sacrifice that weight because it's kind of necessary to have a dinghy when you're cruising and it just got here so let's see what they got it's like christmas so they sent really us is christmas this is one of their lightest and smallest models 250 so it's like eight just over eight feet and i think it weighs like 82 pounds so hopefully it's small enough and light enough that we won't have any issues with it on the trimaran it's a roll up so we could potentially just let all the air out of it roll it up and fit it in some small storage space so it doesn't have to stay inflated the whole time. And we've never, we've had a lot of different dinghies, but we've never had a roll up before. So I'm pretty interested. I'm gonna put this knife away now. Whoa. All right, so this that's looks like- floor. So it's got, on the other side of the floor, it's got a panel. Let's see what that's for, I don't know, but it's got, it's got this hard plastic panel. Maybe wood, might be wood, I'm not sure. And an inflate here. We got some nice ores that we may or may not be needing. Stay tuned for that one. A pen and a floaty keychain and the owner's manual. I think this is the seat in here. Repair kit, pump. This is the hard plastic seat, the same seat that's on our CL360. So this is it all fold, all rolled up or whatever in its own little carrying case, it looks like. Hey, check this out. Do you oh, think wow. it could fit in here? It looks like a, nah, I don't think it'll fit in there. But it could probably fit in one of the hatches in the cockpit or just just lash it to the trampoline while we're cruising. Whoa, <laughs> that's pretty cool. At least you get to the water or whatever. Like a backpack. Yeah, let's try it out. Nice little handle there. So from what I read online, this can hold three people and up to 992 pounds. And it weighs, what did you say, 81 pounds or so? 82, I think. Are you remembering how this was closed? Oh, yeah, I'll remember. I'll close it up long ways and then short ways. So there's the boat. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> So cute. Oh wow, it's hard aluminum transom. This looks very similar to our CL360 heavy duty and a little plug in the bottom there. All right, so just read the owner's manual. So we have to first put the inflatable floor in here and then we'll inflate the floor and then we'll like tuck it up underneath the sides. Why would you inflate the floor before you inflate the keel? Because the hole on, in the floor goes over the keel. Oh. And then we inflate <laughs> the floor some more, I think. And then we inflate the keel. And then we inflate the tube. Let's do it. So we gotta stick that in here, yep. This is the, I think it's called the thrust plate under here. So that goes on the bottom and the hole goes above the keel inflating, what's that called? Valve, the keel valve. And we'll buckle it. All right, Sarah just finished pumping up the floor. So that's the valve for the floor in the front. Do you have to do anything with this? Yeah, now next is the keel. Next we gotta inflate that keel, which is, that's a valve for the keel and it runs all the way underneath here. Um, you can kind of see the last little bit of it back here, right there.
All right, so let's... Uh... Okay, so there's three chambers for the, the rest of the boat, the outside tubes, and it does want you to inflate them in order. So it says first chamber is the side and the second chamber is that side, and then the front chamber. All right. Yep. That's good. So obviously this is going to be much better choice of a dinghy for this boat versus like our CL360 for adrenaline. We love that dinghy, but it would be the most impractical thing in the world to have on this boat. It just would not make sense. So this is probably going to be as perfect as you can get for a dinghy for this boat. And realistically, we'll probably not deflate it and roll it up and then inflate it every single time we go out, like, like go sailing and then get to a new location we'll probably just like pull it up on the trampoline and lash it upside down to the trampoline unless we're going offshore and especially in more moderate to windier conditions but we always do have the option to deflate the whole thing and roll it up if we do need to secure it a little bit better but anytime we would trailer the boat like if we're ever taking this out of the water and putting it on the trailer and driving around the dinghy would be deflated rolled up and at that point if we're doing that a lot we'd probably invest in a compressor yeah like a little, a little 12 volt compressor but in the meantime i think we're gonna try to do a lot more like live aboard cruising type of stuff instead of putting the boat in the water taking the boat out put the boat in the water taking the boat out it's not difficult like like we'd be fine doing it but you guys know us we like to live on the boat and instead of drive and go somewhere sail and go somewhere so that's the plan for the foreseeable future anyways all right can you tell them what's going on because if someone so, buys a dinghy that's probably going to happen there's this little tiny like uh spring-loaded valve in here and if it's compressed that's what lets the air out and you can you can lock it in that position to let all the air out um, so we, I, a few times we forgot to undo that and we can inflate it, but then air leaks out until you pop it open. And so uh, it came shipped to us like that. So if you guys get a dinghy shipped to you and you're inflating it and you take the pump out and it deflates, don't be like, what the heck? It's defective. You just have to pop that thing. So when the spring is in the compressed position, then it's deflating. And then when the spring is in the unloaded position, that will seal it. Um, and it'll make it only a one-way valve. All right, last section, the valve section, and then we should be good to go. So they come with some super fancy schmancy oars. And they live right on the oar lock. Where's my seat? <laughs> yeah, it just kind of hooks into both sides. You're so close. Oh, piece of cake. You just got to push this side a little more. All right, seat's in. We got a dinghy. Come in. Miley wants to go in. Come on, you can come too. Come on, in you go. Your paws are a little dirty, but I guess suppose that's okay. <laughs> you like it, Miley? Daddy, come on. Good girl, you like it? Come on. Come on, Daddy. Come on. Good girl. <laughs> Miley wants the <laughs> Miley wants the front. <laughs> you guys like it? <laughs> well, there's certainly paw prints already. Uh -oh. <laughs> Miley's not going to get out. <laughs> In addition to this, we also have a cool little electric motor that's going to attach to the back of it. Oh, there it is. That's the balance. Can you get the camera? Yeah. <laughs> well, we definitely couldn't do this with our last one. Can you squat it? Maybe. <laughs> you can definitely just toss it around though, it's awesome. Let's get the motor out because as good as a uh, workout rowing is, I think we'll want a little assistance here and there. Drum roll! <laughs> what? You excited to see what's in here? What's in the box? What's in the box? Here, fingers. You guys are excited as we are. 
Dun, dun, dun. So this is a Torquedo electric motor. It's a Travel 1103 CS. S for short shaft, because that's what the dinghy takes. Ooh. So we had a Torquedo before. If you guys watch consistently, you remember a couple years ago, our dinghy engine got stolen and we tried out a Torquedo for a bit on it and it worked really, really well. Torquedo was super great when our engine got stolen. They jumped in like right at that very second. They're like, we have one, we can let you borrow, go for it. And it was perfect to get us to and from the dinghy dock to adrenaline. But you guys know we're normally going out to spearfish and dive and miles and miles of offshore. So it wasn't like a, a realistic long-term solution for us. But with the trimaran, that's a different story. And it's just a difference between planing and non-planing. And obviously this dinghy is not really a planing dinghy. So I think this electric motor is going to be perfect for it. And we don't have to deal with like gas cans and and when we take the motor off the boat and store it for when we go sailing or when we're on the road, we don't have to worry about like gasoline or oil spilling out of the motor or running it dry or any of that stuff. So I think this is the perfect solution for this dinghy. So there's the handle. And the throttle, built-in throttle there. That's your little display screen. It's got GPS and it tells you like how much range you have at certain speeds and stuff like that. There it is, the top of it. Just uses some simple clamps here to mount on the dinghy. I think this is the battery in here. I love there it, it reminds me of Star Wars. How, how heavy is it? Let's see, maybe about 15 pounds? Do you have any stats to see how good my dumbbell rating is? Mm -hmm. Oh, perfect. Right in the middle. Battery just plugs in like so. And then, just tighten that up. Motor cable first. Oh. Motor cable first. Connect first. To Oops, all right, we're gonna undo that. And I'm gonna follow directions like it should be. Motor cable first. All right, and then I'll do what the directions say and do this one second. And then this is to charge it, so we'll just pop, pop that on like that for now. So this is the lock that locks this whole unit into place, something happens, like the control arm doesn't just fall off or the battery just doesn't fall off. The other one Yes, too. there you go. All right, so that locks it all in there. And then here is the kill switch and it's just a magnet there. And then you have it hooked up to you when you're driving so that if you do fall overboard, it just kills the engine. All right, kill switch is on. And there's a the battery charger and the wires and some stuff like that. We'll plug it in and let it charge for a little bit and then we'll get back to it. It is equivalent to like a three horsepower gas motor engine for gasoline. This is electric motor. This is. The C model has extra battery capacity, so it's 915 watt hours of battery. And the S is S for short shaft, which is exactly what the dinghy needs. Short shaft, not a long shaft. We're actually just gonna let this charge all the way up and then we'll put it in this carrying case and tomorrow morning we'll go over to the beach and we'll test this whole rig out. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow. We have the boat all loaded up on my itty bitty car <laughs> and we're gonna go over to the intercoastal, put it in the water and try it out. Are you ready? Yep, let's go test this sucker. And we just got to the ramp. It's actually the same ramp that we used for like <laughs> years and years while we were anchored here on Neverland and Adrenaline. Here we go, we're gonna rig it up. You see that sailboat that sunk out there with the sail still up? Let's just get on and go because we're getting 
destroyed by no seams right now, so hop on. All right, 100% battery here on the controller. We're moving, just like that. Silent. Max speed, go. <laughs> Do you put the plug in? Yeah, plugs in. Look at this. It's awesome. Well, hopefully we won't get waked too bad. Oh, I'm gonna get swamped. Here, sit right here. Exactly what I was expecting in terms of noise, exactly what we experienced at the Annapolis Boat Show. It's it's silent. The other one wasn't that loud originally, but this one is just silent. I hear no motor noise. <laughs> All right, top speed, here we go. So we're at 95% right now. It tells you how many miles you have until empty. So we have around nine miles at this speed until empty and we're going 3.2 knots, 3.3 knots. Well, let's bump it up, see what we got. All right, so this is max throttle now. We're going four knots and we have three and a half miles until empty. So it's probably way more efficient just to kind of back it off and go three, three and a half knots and just will last forever. These are our old boat neighbors. They're also super cool people and treasure hunters. Look at this treasure hunting boat right here. They had us over for dinner one time and they were super nice. Another treasure hunting boat. One of these days we are gonna be treasure hunters. Dang it. If we lost a prop. <laughs> what was that? Line. Were there lines? Yeah, oh, that line. It's probably a booby trap. <laughs> so dinghy feels really good i mean the tubes feel solid it's obviously much shorter than what we're used to so we gotta be careful of any big boat wakes going straight into them but uh it feels solid and stable for a completely inflatable roll up I think this is gonna be the perfect little dinghy to have on the trimaran. The perfect balance of function and just getting to shore wherever we're anchored. Obviously, because that draft is so shallow, we can get pretty close to shore already, and we're only gonna be using it to go back and forth to shore. So I think it's gonna be a perfect little setup for that. How's it feel up there in the bow? It's nice and cozy. I think me and Jenny are gonna fight for this spot, but I think it's perfect. There's a little seat. And yeah, it doesn't, I would expect it to be, feel really tippy just because it's so short, but it feels pretty good, right? Or feels solid. I've never been in like a completely inflatable boat, but it feels pretty solid to me. I don't really know what more to say. I'm just, I'm super impressed with how quiet it is. There's a lot of like water noise, water turbulence around the boat. That sound is way louder than anything produced by the engine, but I'll try to hit the throttle real quick so you can see how quiet it is before the turbulence starts. So ready? We'll go to max throttle. <laughs> this is so quiet. So we're using like a little over 1100 watts right now. Yeah, we're going 4.3 knots max speed right now, but we're going with the current too. And again, I think our most limiting factor here in speed is just the, the length of the dinghy, the waterline length. Still way faster than you could ever row. It's, a, it's amazing, you just tone down the throttle a little bit and your range increases to double or even triple. We're like just under 80% battery and at max throttle we have around three miles left of range. Again, the current might be playing with those numbers a little bit, but if I just reduce the throttle just a little bit, and all of a sudden our range is five miles. And now all of a sudden our range is seven miles. Pretty impressive. Can I drive? Yeah. Well, let's test the kill switch real quick. And then I wonder if it'll put it back. Yeah, so you gotta put the throttle to neutral probably. Makes sense. And then you can go again. Yeah. And then neutral. 
I love it. It's so funny. It's <laughs> in Jupiter on a Sunday with all these like big giant boats with like four engines who were just hanging around in our dinghy. <laughs> wave, wave to them all. Go, go, go. Surf it, surf it. <laughs> I, all the way. <laughs> That's as fast as we can. <gasps> Ooh, snap! <laughs> oh, this thing's gonna get shallow quick. <laughs> Woo! It's stable, I mean, you can't really ask for much more than that from an eight foot dinghy. We're flying with just the current. Think this will work for us in the keys? Hey guys, we hope you liked that video. <laughs> we can't wait to start cruising on the trimaran, and uh, yeah, we just think this setup is gonna be pretty good for that. Those noceums were insane. Like, I really oh, miss living God. on a boat full time. That is the one, if there's anything that you could ask us that we hate the most about living on the boat, it's like some areas that are like really quiet, cool anchorages are no see -em heavens. <laughs> but besides that, 99.9% .9 of things we love, no see -ems are just murderous. Hey, tomorrow, don't wear the same shirt as me. I was just first, <laughs> and I woke up first. So you don't wear the same shirt as me. <laughs> All right, you guys, well, we had a great time hanging out with you. Make sure you subscribe below and the little notification bell button is clicked because YouTube will probably not show you our videos at all if that's not done. And we can't wait to go cruising and yeah, bring you guys along, show you what's next. Yeah, bring you with us. Okay, we'll see you later. Later. Adios.